Hello and welcome to another SQL walkthrough. In this walkthrough we are going to talk about stored procedures. So if you take a look for example at our um, our favs um, slash d plus favs um, sorry I'm almost doing my stick. I always keep it singular. I keep my table name singular because there are, you know, it's a place that we keep a fav. Um, so if we take a look here, um, it's real common to create created at and updated at variables in lots of rows. And um, we can make the default be now, but that's only when the data is uh, inserted. But um, sometimes you want to make it so that every time you automate updated at is automatically changed every time you change it. So, um, so let's go ahead and insert a row. Um, oops, do I, what do I, what's in here? Select star from fab. Let's see what I've got in here. Yeah, I got some stuff. So I got like 999 in there. So I can, you know, update fab, set how much equals, how much plus one, semicolon. Yeah, I forgot the semicolon. And so it's up now a thousand and the created date is still the correct created date, but the updated date didn't change. And it's common that we want the updated date to change. Some database systems have a part of the create statement that you can say auto update the updated at, but it turns out that Postgres does not have that feature. So we have to use what's called a stored procedure. And a stored procedure is a bit of code that you can sort of stick in the server that when the server receives its SQL commands, it can add some of your code to all the work that it's going to be doing. It's a way for you to <clears throat> extend the behavior. So Postgres, the, the stored procedures are their own little language, and I don't expect you to really write them. Uh, I didn't write this one. I Googled, like, how do you automatically fix the updated at in Postgres? And I found this. And this is probably the most common thing people do, partly because other databases uh, do this automatically. But Postgres, for some strange reason, doesn't give you a feature to do this automatically. So the first thing we're going to do is create some code. So create or replace function. This is like inserting code into the database. And um, it's a little weird language, PL, PG, SQL. It's the, there's a bunch of different languages. Um, I prefer to write them in the Postgres native. Uh, these things are not portable. They're very unportable. And so you might as well just use the language you're going to use. Because if you say, oh, I'll use Python or JavaScript, because there's other languages you find that they have compromises and you're not allowed to do everything in them. So heck with it. Just use the built-in stuff and don't fight about it. So that create function puts something in the database. Okay, it put code in the database. And now we have to associate it. And so we're going to create a trigger. A trigger is this bit of code that like is an event that when it sees something happening, it like triggers our code. So it says we're going to make a trigger in the table post each row that's going to, before you update each row, run this code. And this code is basically going to go, here's the new row, and before we put this thing in, acts, change the updated at, and then put it back in the database. So this is like deep, deep, deep in the database. There's no extra transaction. We could put our updated at over up here on this update, but this way we're going to make sure every time this data changes, one way or the other, it's going to run. And so this basically says, go into the post table and mark a little event that says run my little bit of code right before you finish the update. It's kind of in the middle of the update. The update has started and then we're going to run our trigger and then the update finishes. So it's between the time the update is sort of handled and the update is actually set in the database. And it's quite simple and again I, I'm not expecting you to write this but I'm expecting you to conceptually understand what's going on here and you have to realize that this just wrote code this is associating it with the post table. So you only write the, the once. I'm going to put it on the post table. I'm going to put it on the fav table. The fav table. And this would be something you'd probably do in your creation statements. And I'm going to put it in the, the comment table. So now I have these triggers. And so the difference now is when I run this update statement, you will see that the update time it now changed automatically. So I can do that again and then this update time will change again. The create time doesn't change but the, the stored procedure 
has caused that update to happen. And so this, I don't, you, you will find situations where you want to write stored procedures. I tend to uh, generally avoid stored procedures if I can help it. But in this particular situation, it's the way you solve this problem of automatically updating an updated at column. So it's not outrageous to use a stored procedure in this particular situation. So this is one I want you to know, and you'll be, you'll run into some problem and they'll say, oh, there's a way to solve this in Postgres is use a stored procedure. They're not as bad as you think. Writing them is a skill that only advanced Postgresers, um, which I don't even count myself as an advanced Postgresser. So I just go find them and then I use them and I understand what it's doing and why it works and what a, but I don't write them as a matter of course. I write a lot of SQL, but not so much uh, stored procedures. Cheers.